has transformed how everyone interacts socially. It's led to democratic revolutions around the globe. And technology has changed education 2% of the life on the margins. So I don't want to be here three or five years from now say, wait, we're up to 4%. Can we get to a tipping point and break through? And uh, we want to be a great partner. We want to learn from you. We want to try to move some of those barriers. We need your expertise. We need your leadership to figure out how every single child has access to great content 24 7. How we much better support teachers who are doing this hard work every single day. We can engage students again in much more creative ways than we're doing today. I think we can break through. I travel the country. I see amazing pockets, islands of success. But it's on the margins. And the question is, can we get to scale and get to scale as a country much, much faster than we have? So, again, just appreciate the leadership, appreciate the commitment. Um, real challenge is, I think, an amazing chance. And uh, we want to find out how we can help you um, change, change the trajectory of our children's lives and help our country do something. And uh, I don't want to intend to throw them if you thought into a presentation like this. Uh, yes, no. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Secretary, and thank you all. We have some PowerPoint. I know you're consuming some PowerPoints, so I'll give you some more of it. I can raise the value as we do two things. Both of us are grateful and abuse ourselves, uh, and definitely have the favor to respect the level of health of that power path. We look at page one, what is uh, the kind of ingenious that sort of facts we come together to try to add a voice to the already uh, vocal field, which is the implementation of technology and education. I do is take a tacked on view of where are we really and what action items can we put in place quickly. Uh, we believe strongly that we may be at that tipping point already, and the question is how fast and how can we move into the next era? We'll be, first of all, listening. Uh, secondly, we'll be trying to come forward with a blueprint of actionable items, uh, and we expect to report back to you in November and be quite active along the way. Much work to be done, but hopefully a, a useful exercise to drive the change that we all know will happen. We have to understand technology is not a panacea. We have to respect the primacy of the student-teacher relationship, but we have to drive change. The second thing I was asked today is just do something that all of you could do, which is set the table for the discussion that we need to have. And let me do it a little bit in a personal sense. Why am I here? Besides my respect for education, I believe strongly in the ability of technology to change industries. I've watched that across multiple fields. If you look at page two, I started watching TV as many as you did. You could say every program that was on in every hour. And that, mo that uh, moment of delivery gave rise to the Gilligan phenomenon. You know, why is it that seven castaways are still part of our, our national consciousness? And because that's the only way that you could watch TV if you didn't want to watch the monkeys or iron horse, which were the two other things that were on. We all know what's happened in that industry. Uh, today, I watch TV with more package choices than there were stations or programs at the time. You can find Go and Get if you want, or you can find the Sopranos if you prefer. And my children watch TV in a totally different way, watching exactly what they want at the moment they want to watch it. Extraordinary change driven by tech technology and content. It happens time and time again. If you go to page four, uh, news, no more. A paper today, I hook online. I find video and print together. I can figure out not only what CNN wants me to watch, but what everyone else in the country is watching to help me make my choices, and it's customized to me alone. No longer I record executives choosing how I listen to music. Instead, I have uh, my own library with software that tells me what I might want to help me with that decision. Extraordinary changes. In our own industry, if you go to page five, uh, we are known for the uh, slow adoption of change. So when change occurs in education, it's often driven by different delivery methods. The move from uh, having to learn at the foot of the master to books was the major change in education, fundamentally changed the landscape of how people taught in our own country. We moved to primers, uh, one-room school, school houses with teachers and students helping each other. Go to the next page. By uh, mid last century, uh, we had both departments just to deliver film scripts and movies as technology entered the picture and the huge innovation recently of really large backpacks as more information is required to for uh, uh, students in the 21st century. 
We have to do better than this. You go to page seven. Each of you will have your own statistics, but the statistics are just not acceptable. The fact that we rank where we rank on international uh, ratings in education is a challenge for this country and one we must adopt. And at the same time, we're looking at this challenge. Our competitors, other countries, are moving quickly to improve from where they are. Our leaders have understood this. We go to page eight. Uh, the president wants to equip educators with the tools they need to prepare the next generation. This is about tools, it's not about fundamentally changing the teacher-student relationship. And uh, the chairman and the secretary have been leaders in this area. Our leaders know it's true. You know it's true. How do we get it done? Problem is, page nine, change is difficult. These are two quotes I keep in my office. Everyone talks about change, but do they really want it in their own uh, situation in life? And our problem is, as we change, we have to shoot not at where the market is today, but where it's going to be a few years from now. So we're trying to figure out what's delivered this fall. Uh, lead, we have to be thinking about what we're going to deliver four or five years from now. In doing that, unfortunately, change often doesn't uh, come from established areas. We have to push it within established areas on page 10. It's an extraordinary to me. The leading record company thought the Beatles were relevant because guitar music was on the way out. Thomas Edison thought the phonograph had no commercial value. We have to challenge our cherished beliefs as an education system. Why are classes an hour long? Why are students grouped by ages? And we have to use technology as a way to put those beliefs on the table for discussion of what we make for a better educational system. Page 11, just from industry. Uh, my brother works his entire career at Kodak, and he saw the watch. And uh, there are some systems that are able to adapt from a leadership position. Uh, DuPont was originally a gunpowder manufacturer in the War of 1812, still around. We have a requirement as a system to adapt and lead. Why are you all here? It's an ecosystem on page 12, as uh, Julius pointed out. At the center of that ecosystem is the students. And what's interesting is this is uh, a situation often in technological situations you have to get the customer to change. If we really believe the students are at the center, I think they're ready. Uh, 350,000 people show up for Stanford online courses. Khan Academy has you know, 130 million deliberate lessons. Uh, Pearson says 8 million people signed up for their online homework. You know, it is happening. You don't need to leave the horse to water. If the water is there, the horses will come galloping. So we as a system have to believe in, in the ability of our digital natives, which is what our kids are, to adopt the technology that is there if it is high quality and offered to them in a reasonable way. So it's not about the students, in my view, uh, in terms of the need to adopt. They will uh, they realize the power of this. It's about getting the rights to the ecosystem right. Look around the room. This is the ecosystem. Right? This is a representation of what needs to happen. Each of us has to move forward for this to be done well. Uh, content, I'm extraordinary. I'm extraordinarily impressed as I study uh, what's been happening in content. I didn't know how good many of you had, had gotten in this area. But only a few cognizant seem to be aware of it. So uh, we have in the room today, we will discuss how content can move forward in a way that will uh, push the ecosystem from a content-driven way. We don't need to watch good. Second piece of it on page 14 is connectivity. Uh, this, to me, is one of the really important stumbling blocks. We have uh, the CEOs of Spring T-Mobile here to help us talk about it today. Uh, for digital textbooks to be delivered, we have to go from knocking down trees and turning them into pulp to actually having the digital resources at the fingertips of students everywhere. It is a key element. Uh, we're at, uh, you tell me, 65, 70 percent. We have a target of 98 percent. We are going to get there. And if we get there, this becomes much easier. Technology, we have a number of these leading device makers here. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I don't think this is the issue today. I think the uh, cost will come down, and I think uh, uh, over time this would be an attractive enough market that the device makers should want to help this to happen, and they have the wherewithal to do that. But we have uncertainty about how to fund the capital necessary, how to make sure access is at both home and school. These are the problems we have to solve. Basically, I am so uh, gratified by the leadership that uh, the chairman and secretary are showing because at the end of the day, government has to break through the roadblocks that government sometimes creates. 
and it has to work with other members of the ecosystem to assure access and affordability. It has to happen. I think the leadership being shown here is critical. Much work has been done, uh, and I think we are at a tipping point in terms of focus. And then uh, lastly, on page 17, at the end of the day, it's teachers and administrators. I might have uh, included Joel or Arnie or such, uh, you know, in terms of people within the ecosystem here that are critical. But we are seeing enormous bottoms up innovation in the classroom, and we as an ecosystem need to figure out how to celebrate that, uh, welcome it, and drive it forward. Um, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for all about that. So that's really setting the table. Each of us may point to other parts of the ecosystem, but at the end of the day, the entire ecosystem needs to move forward. The, uh, the students want it. Uh, the data is uh, quite powerful that the results can be outstanding if the content and delivery is good. So the question is how and how fast and the power of this within this ecosystem to affect those facts. So we've split this up, content, connectivity, technology, government, teachers, administration, and uh, Julie's really throw it to you to see how you want to sort through some of these questions and, and get the issues on the table with the ecosystem all day. Uh, thank you uh, for doing that, for putting the time into that. Thank you again, everyone uh, uh, who's joined us. It's really such a terrific group of leaders uh, from across the country, across this ecosystem. What we're going to do now uh, is take a very quick break. Uh, and then we're going to roll up our sleeves and get to work. So hold on for a couple minutes.